This is the real reason I haven't been watching anime this year. Hey everybody and welcome back to Droob's Vids and another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about quite the revelation it may seem to some of you out there, but I haven't been watching anime this year. Actually, I have watched a little bit, probably stopped in February or so, but we'll get into that in a minute. Before that, I'd like to talk a little bit about the channel here recently. I've been doing these daily videos, I think this is day four now, and if you guys have been enjoying the videos, I hope you have, but if you have been enjoying it, appreciate it. And yeah, so I was looking at some analytics and stuff. I, I choose, I don't know, why did I say choose? I generally don't try to bore you guys with stuff like, you know, the YouTube analytics stuff on the channel, but yeah, and before I get into all that, this is a talking head video, so, you know, you guys can go ahead and minimize it, do whatever you got to do, listen to in the background, but yeah, so like I was saying, I try not to bore you guys with all the numbers and stuff like that, but recently, since I started doing the daily uploads here, at least for this week, I noticed that the percentage from subscribers and non-subscribers is huge, and it's looking like 89.3% of you guys out there that are watching are not subscribed and as many of you may know I usually wait till like the very end of the video to you know ask you guys to like if you like the video and subscribe if you want more content but that's my choice that's typically what I like to do so that way I'm not that guy right I'm not all in your face about yo hit that subscribe button every 10 seconds don't forget to hit that subscribe button you know stuff like that I just don't think that's relevant in terms of what I create for content. So <laughs> with that being said, hit that subscribe button and let's get into this video. So with all that, yeah, that was the worst transition ever. But yeah, so like I was saying, anime, if you guys have been watching the channel for any amount of time, you know, I'm a big anime fan. I've watched a lot of anime, but this year was a little bit different. You know, I ran into some health issues and, you know, a few other things in my personal life. So, I don't know if that was it. Because normally, what I do when I watch an anime is I like to take a break. And it's usually around the winter season that I take a break from anime as not to burn myself out from it. So, this year, what I did differently, like, I'll, I'll catch up on, like, some other shows, you know, American TV shows and stuff like that. But this year was a little different because... I actually went off some recommendations from you guys out there for some Korean TV shows. And boy, I tell you what, as soon as I started getting into these Korean TV shows, I never looked back. And that's 100% the reason I haven't been watching anime this year. And to, to be honest, I think, you know, some events led up to this, but really based off your guys' recommendations, I was like, yeah, when I take my, you know, my break usually lasts, you know, a couple weeks in terms of taking a break from anime and then get right back into it with all the new stuff. But yeah, I haven't watched anything new that's come out. I know a lot of people, you know, ask my opinion on some of the new stuff and I'm just like, yeah, I can't really say anything on it because I haven't watched it. And I kind of counter back with, hey, have you seen this Korean show? It's fantastic. So the main recommendation I got going into this was actually the Uncan Uncanny Counter. It's kind of hard to say. Uncanny Counter. And I watched this show and I was just genuinely impressed by it. the budget of it, the story, the character development. It was fantastic. So I had the, the second recommendation on my list was Sweet Home, which was really good too. That was so Uncanny Counter. I guess you can kind of think of as the South Korean version of Mob Psycho. If you guys have watched Mob Psycho or, you know, read Mob Psycho, like, if you compare it to that, it's very comparable, in my opinion. But I just think they knocked Uncanny Counter out of the park. It's really, really good. And Sweet Home is more of a, a horror-type suspense deal. And that was fantastic. I really enjoyed that. And I'm not really big into the horror stuff. But when I watched this, I was just like, wow. And, and again, the character development is fantastic. The, just like I think the budget alone in some of these shows are just 
ridiculous and they it shows right like just the storytelling in general and the ability to relate to some of these characters in my opinion is a lot easier than relating to an anime character if you think about it or at least the way i see it is because you got your anime characters obviously they're voiced by real people but at the end of the day they are drawn characters now in these Korean TV shows, a lot of people refer to them as K-dramas, so we'll just refer to them as that going forward here in this video. You have, you know, obviously made up characters, but they're acted by real people. And I feel like that aspect of it, because you still get the, a lot of them have like that fantasy aspect that you look for in animes, and this just makes it easier to kind of relate to that particular character's troubles or, you know, their triumphs. Just because they're, you know, a real person. Like, I'm not saying that, hey, you know, these are real people. You should relate to them. But at the end of the day, it's still a TV show, right? So it's still not real. But I just find it a little bit easier to kind of relate there to a, a real person versus an anime character. But I think that's just something over time that I kind of develop there. Especially branching out into, like, live action stuff and whatnot. But, yeah, there's just a lot of shows I've watched, Korean dramas, like, I've absolutely loved them. And, like, I recommend a bunch of different ones all the time based off what people prefer. And my main source here that I've been watching these on has been Netflix. But, shout out to my buddy George. He, at, he actually has one of those uh, Plex servers that I'm able to, I guess, request shows and they get downloaded so I can watch them on there if Netflix doesn't have it. So, you know, I've, I've exhausted a lot of the shows there on Netflix. So now I'm able to watch all these other shows. Some of them are older, which, you know, to me, I never would have, like, sought these out, right? I never would have sought out some older K-dramas. But after watching the ones I have, I'm kind of like, man, I need to, you know, look up, you know, what popular k-dramas are out there and just check them out and see how they are and see what i've been missing out on and it's funny if you think about it because now going back to watch these older k-dramas that i previously missed out on i feel like i don't know maybe that same thing's gonna happen to me with anime if i shouldn't say if when i eventually go back to anime but i think i'm eventually going back to anime right because that's been my bread and butter like i haven't even watched like the Witcher 2, season 2 came out. I haven't even watched that yet. I'm still just watching K-dramas. Like, I'm currently watching Revolutionary Love. Fantastic. Like, it's very funny. And that's the thing, too. Like, a lot of foreign shows, I find it's kind of hard to, like, get the humor and stuff in it. But, I don't know, it's just, it's just the way the storytelling goes in some of these shows that it just, like I said, makes it so relatable. And the jokes are easy to pick up on. And, you know sometimes like it, that gets lost in translation like even in anime you'll see it like they'll tell a joke and then you'll kind of just be a little lost especially if it's not you know your culture that you grew up with right so it's just something about the way they're able to tell the story and develop the characters and that's the the big thing i've noticed too is that character development is like you know some of the best i've seen in shows in my opinion and you know i'm a big fan of character development and, and support characters because I really think that's what makes the main character tick is that support character and how they develop. So as the support character develops, obviously supporting the main character, that main character is able to develop in turn. So I think support characters are paramount in anything you watch really, but that's just my opinion. So yeah guys, just a quick kind of talk ahead video here. Hopefully it wasn't too jumbled up in terms of what I was trying to convey in terms what I was trying to convey as far as watching these K-dramas go versus me not watching anime this year and I don't know I don't know if I'm just gonna stay on the K-drama train because they're always releasing new stuff and that's one of the things too is generally you'll find like one of these shows and they're just done in one season which is nice because you know, you're not waiting around 
you know, a year, couple years, five years, Attack on Titan, to get a new season. And you're able to, you know, watch it in its entirety. Like, episodes are hour plus long. Watch it in its entirety, and then generally be satisfied with the end of it. Sometimes you get those endings that are not the best, or not the best situationally. You know, sometimes they leave you wanting more, but there are fairly big, you know, or popular, I should say, K-dramas out there that, that do get a second season or, you know, continue on for a little bit longer after the original season airs, you know, and I think, especially now, with the popularity of Squid Game, which I did watch, mind you, I watched a bunch of K-dramas prior to Squid Game coming out, and... I have an opinion on it. I don't really want to put it in this video. Okay, I will. Like, out of 10, I'd probably like put it right in the middle at like 5. Maybe 6 on a good day. I just, I thought it was visually appealing. Looked fantastic. Music was great in it. But in terms of story, eh, kind of non-existent. The concept was cool. And character, character development, not quite there. I think the detective guy in that show actually had the best character development out of anybody and he wasn't in that show that much so yeah it was uh there's some weird dynamics going on in that show but yeah i got you know i'll settle on six i'll say it's six out of ten that's not to make too many squid game fans out there mad but yeah that one like really took off here in the u.s for whatever reason and I guess it's kind of like anything else when, you know, even like when it anime becomes like really popular, you could sit there and just be like, man, I can name easily 10 other animes off the top of my head that are 100% better than that show. And that's the same thing I felt when, when this Squid Game kind of popularity went haywire, right? I'm just like, why of all shows, this one, there's so many better ones out there, but yeah, guys, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but yeah, that's kind of going to be it for this video. If you guys have been watching any type of Korean TV shows, K-dramas, let me know down in the comments below which ones you have watched and if you have any recommendations for, for me. I have watched a bunch of them. I don't want to sit here and list off, you know, a whole lot, but if you just let me know down in the comments below, I'll let you know if I've watched it or not yet and, you know, we'll go from there. And like I said, if you guys got any recommendations, please let me know. And if you do want to discuss some of these shows, you know, just hit me up on Instagram and, you know, we can have a discussion. If it's something I watched already, if not, I will be adding it to my list. And yeah, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next video.